$5.7 billion. That is how much Vice was worth at its peak in 2017. In just a few years, Vice has gone from being worth billions to crumbling down. Vice Media was once one of the hottest names in new media. They've just filed for bankruptcy protection ahead of a proposed deal to sell off to a consortium of lenders. It's an extraordinary collapse. Just a few years ago, they had a multi-billion dollar valuation. So that's a huge plunge here. Mark, simply put, what happened? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating case of, uh, of a brash media brand. That there are rumors the company will be sold for $400 million. That's not even 10% of what it was worth. The news of its sad demise shocked many people, but some people did see it coming. It started as this edgy media company that did amazing investigative journalism by going to places like North Korea and war-torn Syria. However, as its popularity grew, it sort of lost its charm. Maybe it was the content or it was the fault of the executives who ran the company like a boys club. Vice was supposed to be the future of media, but if you dig a bit deeper, it starts to become clear why Vice would never work. The founder literally bluffed his way to the top by lying and deceiving investors. In an interview once, he lied about Richard Zalwinski, a media mogul, investing in Vice just to appear more legit. This is the wild story of Vice. Vice, which was initially a magazine, was started by three friends, Sarush Alvey, Gavin McInnes, and Shane Smith in 1994 in Montreal, Canada. When the trio first started the magazine, they named it Voice of Montreal. Vice was edgy and cool. The magazine mostly focused on punk and hippie culture. Many young people saw mainstream media as lame, and they needed something they could relate to. This is where Vice came in with its edgy magazine covers and topics that the mainstream would never talk about. Vice talked about everything from sex and drugs to other topics usually considered taboo. The magazine was being sold for free, and it was started on government welfare, but co-founder Shane Smith had high ambitions for the company. He told people constantly how they were soon going to be rich. Along with high ambitions, Shane also had a tendency to bluff. As the magazine gained popularity, Vice was noticed by mainstream media. In an interview with a reporter, Shane told them that Richard Zalwinski, a media mogul, had invested in Vice. The problem was that he actually hadn't. After the news of his investment in Vice started to circulate, rather than being critical of Shane, he was actually impressed and decided to invest. Richard encouraged the trio to move to New York. From there, the growth of Vice knew no bounds. They expanded rapidly, but the credit of this expansion can be given to Shane and his ways. Often, when reports and potential investors came around, Shane would do everything he could to make them believe that Vice was the next big thing. This would cause the fear of missing out among them, and they would buy whatever Shane was telling them. Often, most of the things Shane said would not be true. New York was the center of the hippie culture in the 2000s, and being associated with Vice meant you were cool. You didn't keep up with the mainstream media to stay cool. That was lame. You read the Vice magazine, went to their parties filled with drugs and alcohol, and worked for them to stay cool. People even sometimes offered to work for free, just so they could associate themselves with Vice. This worked in their favor, and they took full advantage of it. 2007 was a big year for Vice, as it became one of the first companies to make online videos with VBS.TV. This was a start of an epic journey for Vice. Vice has its roots in being edgy, cool, and different, and there was no way they were not going to do that with their videos. Their reporters, and sometimes even the co-founders, went to very strange and dangerous places. These places and topics were rarely covered by mainstream media, and this started to garner a lot of attention for Vice. This became the thing Vice was known for. For instance, in the mid-2000s, co-founder Shane Smith went to North Korea and made a whole series about it and its labor camps. North Korea is notorious for being secluded from the world and its human rights abuses. Before this, many people, especially the young people, did not know much of anything about the Hermit Kingdom. With Shane's comedic nature in reporting, the videos were a hit. And to this day, when people remember the old Vice, they think about these videos. As this became their style, they reported in multiple dangerous places like war-torn Syria, Libya, and Afghanistan, among many other places. They had a way of making these current affairs and news fun. Even if they were reporting on world events, they did not forget their roots. To still keep young people interested in their content, they talked about drugs and sex a lot. They even had a series dedicated to exploring various kinds of unique drugs around the world, called Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia. With all of this, Vice sort of became something equivalent to a household name among young people. Whatever content Vice was producing, it was able to get the attention of the young people, and Shane Smith 
leveraged this to the fullest. He constantly told mainstream media that Vice was the future of digital media. The fact that the content of Vice could attract young people became their major selling point. He often told people that he wanted Vice to be the next CNN, and that he could see that happening. With his great selling point, high ambition, and a little bit of bluffing here and there, he was able to bring in a lot of investors. These investors included 21st Century Fox, Disney, and A&E Networks, among many others. Disney invested around $400 million in Vice. Everyone seemed to believe in what Shane Smith was selling, but boy, they were wrong. It was soon evident that investors had overhauled the company, and they may never see returns on their investments. Now, let's see what went wrong with a company once deemed the future of media. To start, their whole business model itself was flawed. You might wonder, why wasn't the company that was so popular, with a massive social media presence and huge numbers of subscribers not making any profit? The thing is, it wasn't. Vice was struggling to turn a profit. It depended on ad deals. Vice did not focus on monetizing its audience. Failing to do so was a costly mistake on Vice's part. Their inability to make a profit made the investors wary. It looks like their expansion around the world, as well as their expensive content, was most probably backed by the money brought in by the investors rather than the profit they were making. For a company that relied heavily on ad deals, the worsening economy caused by the pandemic was more bad news. This meant that the companies were spending less on advertisements, which meant the revenue of companies like Vice decreased. Another thing that went wrong was that they put all their bets on being cool and relevant to the young people, and to some extent, that backfired. It was almost as if their currency was cool, and all their bargaining power came from them being seen as cool by the younger people. So what happens when your main audience outgrows being cool? You go bankrupt. With the rise of the internet, mobile phones, and streaming services, the culture of binge-watching came along and took all the audience with them. This meant that people still buying cable services significantly decreased. Vice thought that they had an opportunity here. They thought that, as most of their audience is young people, them putting their shows on cable TV could bring back young people to the cable world. But that did not go exactly as planned. It was appealing when you think about it. Vice partnered with HBO to create shows for its channel. Most of their content was a hit or miss. Vice realized that to sustain on a cable channel, you need quantity, and with this, as time passed, its focus moved from quality to quantity. It also could not fulfill the promise of being able to bring younger audiences back to the cable world as their average viewer was 42 years old. This caused HBO to be skeptical of this partnership. One other reason that has contributed hugely to the failure of Vice is because of the work culture there. The executives ran the company like a boys club. Their work culture was also very similar to that of the things they were publishing. It was unconventional. The use of drugs and alcohol, along with the romantic relationships between the employees, was like an open secret in the office. Because of this, a lot of young people flocked to Vice for work. It was cool and fun to work at Vice. Imagine showing up to work drunk or stoned and no one bats an eye. Also, let's be honest, the reason why so many young people wanted to work there was not because of their pay. The work hours were long and the pay was low. Their pay was so low that with their salary, employees were barely able to pay rent in New York City. Rather than hip young people who wanted to be seen as cool, what the company actually needed were lawyers and accountants. Their accounts were a mess. Employees would be handed money for various projects and nobody would look over the excess or deficit expenses. There were also instances when a manager admitted that the company simply did not have cash in hand. The workplace was chaos. The employees were not making money, nor was the company, but the co-founders lived a lavish lifestyle, especially Shane Smith. With the success of Vice, he became a billionaire. He was known for spending huge amounts of money. He bought himself mansions worth millions of dollars. It was also reported that Shane once spent $300,000 on a dinner. He later corrected the report, saying it was actually $380,000, not just $300,000. Let's just say he liked to live big. All this would be completely okay if he was paying his employees a livable wage. The work environment was also sort of toxic with constant partying, alcohol, and drugs. New employees were made to sign a non-traditional workplace agreement, saying they were okay with the unconventional work environment, as sexually provocative and other explicit images, videos, and audio recordings are regularly present in Vice's offices. When the Me Too movement started in 2017, Vice was not spared. Almost two dozen women came out with allegations of sexual misconduct and a toxic workplace. It was not a safe place for women to work. After the allegations, the two co-founders issued an apology for having a boys club culture in the company. We have failed as a company to create a safe and inclusive workplace where everyone, especially women. From 2018 onwards, the company started to decline. It reached its peak value of $5.7 billion in 2017. 
as it was struggling to bring in any profit, many employees were laid off to reduce the cost. Shane wanted to sell the company, and once there were talks about maybe Disney buying the company, but that never happened. As they were focusing on quantity, the quality started slipping, and the very young people that were Vice's core audience outgrew it. They were not willing to pay for content they got to see for free before. Their very identity was that they were not like the mainstream media, but as Vice grew, it started to resemble a lot like the mainstream media, which they rebelled against. This made Vice lose its identity. Throughout the years, Vice has struggled to meet its financial goals. According to Wall Street Journal, the company had aimed to make $700 million in revenue, but could not meet that goal by $100 million. All this makes you wonder if the bankruptcy was inevitable. In May 2023, the company ultimately filed for bankruptcy as it was impossible to sustain how the company was performing. Vice has come a long way from its humble beginning in Montreal to being a media giant with expansion in over 30 countries. It was rebellious and reported on things that mainstream media would never. From reporting on hallucinogenic honey from Nepal, to being on the front lines of the civil war in Libya, to going undercover in drug cartels in Mexico to North Korea, Vice has been there. If Smith egotistically thought that Vice was too big to fail, he was so wrong. Drugs, alcohol, parties, and the illusion of prosperity could only go on for so long. Vice had a good run, but for now, the future of Vice is uncertain. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed our video.